This is Brian from Joyweather, and you're listening to As the Story Grows. Welcome to the next chapter of As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. This week, we welcome Brian Ishiba from indie rock band Joy Weather to the show. Joy Weather will release their new single, A Little While, this Friday, February 4th. A clip of the song is at the end of this week's podcast. Brian talks about going to college in Japan and the impact that had on his life, his preference for writing and recording over touring, and creativity without limits. A huge shout out to Maggie Schneider and Britt Hughes from Common Ground for connecting Brian and I. This was a delightful conversation, and I hope you guys enjoy getting to know Brian Ishiba from Joy Weather. Every, every day there's something new it's like my daughter's school there's like there's COVID in the school in her class but she's vaccinated yeah. so she could still go and it's like mm-hmm. well should should she <laughs> like yeah you're right it's like uh i don't know how i feel about sending her there i was, I was like okay get her tested and she, huh. mm-hmm. like i i don't know i work with kids during the day and mm. it's it's just a total mess it's a shit show all the time yeah, uh, yeah. no one knows what they're doing yeah are you guys all like messed up out there like yeah, I mean, I think California in general, people are are pretty good about it. You know, um, not everyone, of course, yeah. but <laughs> you know, by and large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild. It's wild. <sighs> yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> like we, this, this was supposed to be a two week thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Where, uh, uh, geez, they're like, it'll be a two week vacation, whatever, yeah, and then right. just two years later. Yeah, no, uh, it does. It does bug me a little bit when people start talking about the pandemic in past tense and I'm like, yeah. we're still in it, you know? Right, right. I know we've just decided like everything's fine, but <laughs> it's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that, yeah. you know the meme with the dog with on like at the coffee oh, table yeah. where everything's on yeah, that's that's basically what the world is now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny when I talk to like European bands and stuff, and they're like, Yeah, no, mm. things things are locked down here. And I'm just like, Yeah, over here we're just like done who cares who cares who cares you know we're just at the point where we're assuming everyone's going to get it now so yeah we, we, yeah and and they are <laughs> right uh unfortunately uh well we're past, yeah sorry yeah no no i was gonna say i'm glad to talk to you um yeah glad to have you I'm, on i'm stoked to be here yeah talk to you yeah, yeah this is awesome I, I was just looking at your page you work with uh joey's in your band uh maggie's brother Mm -hmm. that's that's rad maggie's so awesome she's the best um i'm i don't i've gotten to work with her a little bit more uh like we recorded actually her her next album that's coming out uh, recorded here um and yeah i mean she's just such a sweet person yeah 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 it's super rad well uh let's let's jump in um where are you from originally uh, from uh, well, here doesn't help. I'm from California, <laughs> <laughs> like Los Angeles County. Uh, cool. So like a but a suburb outside. Uh, born and raised, but I did go to college in Japan, and I worked there for a few years uh, in Tokyo. Yeah, what was that decision to go to college in Japan? You know, uh, so uh, I'm what I guess it's second generation. If my parents are the ones who who moved here, um, but you know, like I, I was born here, grew up my whole life and never had really you know been to or lived in japan and so i think it's like an immigrant thing where you're like mm. i gotta know what the the motherland is like or like <laughs> where my parents you know grew up um and so 
I thought that'd be kind of cool. Uh, and also, it's just cheaper to go to school out there compared yeah. to here. Like, it was, yeah, it's better to pack up my whole life, move <laughs> to a different country, go to school, and then come back. And that would have been cheaper. Oh, or it was cheaper. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's awesome. What was that like experience like? Was it like weird? You just feel like a fish out of water? Like, yeah, like so going. Um, I, I I don't know. I think I don't know if you can be a weeaboo if you are Japanese, but like okay. I had such a a fascination with Japanese culture, um, and so I was so stoked to, to be there and go there, and then immediately you're hit with the reality of like what life is actually like mm -hmm. um so there was like a, a culture shock for like two straight years <laughs> and i had gone through like loving japan absolutely hating it think it's the worst place ever and then kind of coming back around and being able to see the nice sides of it um but yeah it's it's weird i feel like i've become more and less japanese after <laughs> having lived there <laughs> uh, that's funny it's like you are japanese but you're also fully american and you're like i don't know that i belong here <laughs> yeah oh man that's that was a big thing where you know like i think the realization again i think this is maybe um some other you know i don't know i guess immigrant children can can relate where like you you don't feel fully american but you don't mm -hmm. feel fully the other thing and you're in this sort of in between um but you know over there i luckily met a lot of people who are the same and it's kind of a special relationship to have where you're like oh we're all in this kind of weird uh, yeah. in between phase or state. Um, yeah, it was, it was overall a fantastic experience though. That's cool. What'd you study? Uh, <laughs> I went in thinking I wanted to be a, a businessman. Uh, I took one <laughs> class and immediately found out, Oh, I hate this. This is like <laughs> just chipping away at my soul and, oh, and my man. being, <laughs> but I, I ended up finding, uh, sociology and anthropology to be like really interesting um and so i just figured you know what i'm gonna do this and i don't know if you know but like in japan it kind of doesn't matter what your major is okay i've had i have art history major friends who work at like goldman sachs makes absolutely no sense all right but that's kind of how they do things out there and so i figured who cares i'll i'll just <laughs> study what i want to study you know maybe i'll yeah. actually remember and learn stuff which i do yeah that's it, great that's great does that like influence your writing it did oh man in college my writing was so pretentious it was <laughs> uh because you know we had to read experts or sorry not expert excerpts of the communist manifesto and huh. max weber and marks and angles and all that stuff and so i was like oh yeah this is this is the way and i would try to like incorporate that in my writing and i look back now i just <laughs> it hurts <laughs> uh, that's so funny because your new single is or your last single is influenced by parks and recs which is the opposite of that <laughs> right <laughs> oh uh, man it's, it's both sides of your your personality the american and the japanese <laughs> yeah i think so i think maybe as a writer or like any art artistic person you do something and then the next thing you do is like a total not rebellion but like mm -hmm. you know you just you have to go in the fully in the opposite direction yeah yeah that's awesome that's fine well what got you into music um i i hated music actually or i didn't like music very much until high school um because you know i grew up in the 90s so it was a lot of like blink was on the radio which is mm -hmm. cool um eminem was like especially big or like just kind of you know uh and then there was like you know the 90s boy bands and all that stuff and i would you listen to whatever your parents are playing in the car right because i don't yeah. have any siblings i didn't have anyone to show me <laughs> cool music and so it was just like mainstream pop and i was like this sucks i don't know <laughs> i guess i don't like music because i've never heard anything else you know um but then in high school there's this dude uh who sat in front of me and he was like hey i need to borrow your ipad and or not your ipad your ipod and i was like okay sure whatever which in hindsight was a stupid idea to <laughs> let someone borrow this thing but he came back he, he was like i hope you don't mind i put a bunch of music on it and then he had like the postal service and like protest the hero and a lot of like death metal <laughs> so I'm like, oh, this is sick. I like this. <laughs> and uh, in high school, when I was like 15 or 16, I just went down like the the metal, you know, path. So Ozzy Osbourne nice. loved it. Judas Priest, the classics. I was hella into um, Children of Bodom. I don't know, just <laughs> that stuff. Um, but I don't know. It made me think guitar was cool because like otherwise I didn't really care. 
Yeah. Um, and I remember watching this like old Ozzy Osbourne clip with like Randy Rhodes playing that like mm-hmm. flying V with the yeah. polka dots and being like, man, this is the coolest dude ever. Uh, I want to do that. And so uh, that made me pick up guitar. You know, I was like, I, I want to do that. That's um, so awesome. That's <laughs> a little so bit later. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What was that transition from like being super into metal and picking up guitar and to just like writing more pop emo oriented songs? Was it just like, <laughs> I can't, I will never be able to shred like that? <laughs> that is a big part of it. Like, Ooh, this is, uh, this is tough. Um, so in college, I, I met my, I don't know, best friend at the time. And I guess, you know, we're still very close. Um, who was another, I guess, influential person for me. And he was really into pop punk and emo. And so we were kind of talking about music and he's like, Hey, let me show you these bands that I like. And it was like the story so far in transit. And then also like some of the classic pop punk, like the starting line, the Ataris mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and I just really like, wow, this is, this is cool. I like this. And I can also actually do this <laughs> versus, you know, sweet picking at 150 BPM or whatever. Right. Um, yeah so weird weird transition but i'm glad i made it yeah yeah were you just playing guitar like in your bedroom through high school and then into college or was it were you playing in bands at that point uh totally playing by myself all the time um oh that sounds weird um you know what i mean you know what i mean yeah yeah um but yeah because you know i I picked up guitar at 18 and so you know, by that time, everyone's already either in a band and I don't know anyone, you know, moved to Japan. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm too introverted to, I think, seek out other people to like yeah. play with. And so it's just by myself, I was like a singer songwriter essentially for a long time after I sort of discovered songwriting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was after moving back that I, I was like, I want to be in a band. I want to play the music that I'm listening to, you know, yeah. as much as I love singer songwriter stuff too. I feel like that's, kind of a core music thing for me but yeah yeah was that the catalyst for joy weather yeah i think um you know i was writing songs you know myself and it all just sounded like uh elliot smith and like early pedro the lion or owen or something like that um which is all good but yeah which i love you know <laughs> uh but wanted to rock out a little bit um and just put out a Craigslist ad actually for for bandmates <laughs> as you do, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was how uh, I came to meet Joe. Or yeah, I came to meet. I ended up meeting Joey. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Eventually, uh, we were in a different band before. It was called Royce, but that's a terrible SEO, as the uh, the cool kids say. <laughs> and we changed our name to something that's a little more searchable. Yeah, yeah. It was was that like something you really thought about, like? having a searchable band name or something that like was easy to connect with or not at first you know uh yeah. picking picking a terrible band name but when we decided like hey let's because we ended up quitting the band when i moved to japan and when i moved back we're like hey let's start a new band and that was like definitely on the forefront of my mind where like i didn't want it to be you know maybe we play a show or you know, we're telling people about our band and you can't find it like that's right. That's not fun. Um, <laughs> and so that was a, a big thing. Like, hey, what's searchable? But what sounds right? What's got a good ring to it? Um, and I had just kind of decided that I wanted a band name that had three syllables and like okay. a certain rhythm to it, like bum, bum, bum. And I, I don't know. I just kind of like would daydream and think about like different mm-hmm. adjective and noun combinations that I, I thought sounded good and nice and ended up at joy weather which i thought i don't know kind of felt appropriate to the kind of music i was writing at the time as well um but i don't know it sounded good to my ears and that's kind of a big thing for me even for songwriting you know Mm -hmm. like where the the emphasis lies yeah yeah that's funny it was just like these are the words in combination that sound good to the ear and like Mm -hmm. (laughs) have the right syllables (laughs) and yeah it's it's very unromantic you know yeah. I wish it, it could have been like ah i don't know this is the diner that we used to hang out in right you know, or something but um that's that's for the first band you know this is we're trying yeah. to be a little bit more 
<laughs> searchable and cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's, it's so hard to come up with band names that aren't taken or unique these days anyways. And Right, I think if, you're either... If you're successful, you're 20 years into your career going, God, <laughs> right. this band name sucks. And so... <laughs> what have I done? You can't get away with American football now. Like no one's, no one's gonna right. take who, that. Who did that? <laughs> yeah, a bunch of what? What a dummy! <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's so funny. That's awesome. I see you. Uh, you put out a record in 2020. Was that always planned before the pandemic hit that you were going to release oh. music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, move back, and I had written all those songs, and we were going to work on them, and. We're so stoked for 2020. I mean, mm -hmm. as I'm sure a lot of bands or a lot of people were, uh, put it out in January and then by what March, it was like nothing is happening now. Uh, yeah, it was the plan. We were gonna take over the world, and we had big dreams, but you know, <laughs> I yeah, don't know. yeah. I mean, yeah. There's so many people who are like, 2020 was the year, the big year, and you. Right. They're all set, and then like, it just killed so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it honestly makes me really nervous to be at all ap optimistic about this year. You know, we're two weeks into or twenty twenty two, and I'm like, yeah. can I be excited about it? There are things I'm excited about, but I, I'm like scared to be almost. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys been able to play shows and get out? Uh we Since, have or? not. No, I don't know if we haven't been able to, or we've chosen not to. It's kind of a uh, unclear what what the uh, the I don't know dividing line is, but we have not played any shows since our album release show in Man. what like January of twenty twenty. Uh, Two years, yeah. Much to the dismay of Joey, our drummer, mm -hmm. I, to be honest with you, prefer recording and writing. Okay, it's like my. If I had to choose, obviously I like both, but mm -hmm. you know, if someone was like, you can only do one or the other, then that would be my choice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find it's easier to be a musician these days and just be able to write and release songs at your leisure without feeling the pressure to tour because everything is so internet based anyways, or is it just like, yeah. if we're going to make this work, we got to be on the road at some point. I don't I feel like it's uncool and unpopular to say, but I kind of like the state of music yeah. <laughs> and, and not having to tour tour kind of I don't want to say it sucks, but it's it's not easy, man. Like yeah, I, I know there's a romance to it and, and stuff like that, but you know, like my lower back is not as as strong as it once was. I you know, I can't really be sleeping on hardwood floors and sitting in a van for eight hours. I don't know. Um like I I you know. I will and like to, but also I feel like, I don't know, it's maybe it's uh, getting to sort of like tickle the creative part of the brain mm -hmm. a little bit where versus like being a band or a yeah. musician or something like that. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I, I kind of do like the state of not being able to tour personally, yeah. you know, just for myself, for other people, it's, it's terrible, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we're at this phase too, where, you know, if you're in a band, what touring is like and how little money there is and the romanticism of being a rock star is mm -hmm. it's gone. That doesn't exist. You know, it just yeah. sucks. Like, yeah, you're just like, oh, cool. I got to Right. It's like, oh, our choices today are Taco Bell or McDonald's. What do you feel like <laughs> Subway? You know, the venue gives you whatever, two beers and a slice of pizza or something. And you're like, live in the dream, right. which you and are, but also. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> the dream is sad. It it is, uh, but I'm trying not to be a grouch or a grinch. Yeah, I don't want to be pessimistic on it. I mean, that's it. Also, I think there are some friendships, right? You make on mm -hmm. tour where like yeah. somehow, despite only having spent 14 hours with a person, you become so close. Mm -hmm. And like every time you hit their city, every time they come to your city, you want to see them and hang out. And I don't know. I think there's like a a really magical thing that happens with your interpersonal relationships as a, in regards to touring and I don't know, like yeah. finding fellow musicians. Yeah. Are you working with uh, common ground as your label or management? Uh, to work, working with them for PR. I don't okay. know what PR. that falls under. Okay. But. That's awesome. How'd you get connected with them just through Joey? 
Yeah. So uh, Maggie, Maggie had worked with them in the past, and I think she still does. And yeah. so, and we kind of had floated the idea to her, um, we're like, hey, we're kind of looking for PR if you know any people. Um, and yeah, that was the first thing that came up. We had a little meeting and instantly decided, yeah, Brit's cool. We like how, I don't know. It, she seemed like a trustworthy person. Yeah. And so we're like, yeah, let's try it. Let's do this. Well, you have a single you just released for the weekend. Uh, like we said, uh, kind of Parks and Recs uh, inspired. Yeah. Um, yeah. You were talking about that single you released in November. Kind of a fun, like, uh, it's got some summer vibes uh, for a fall mm-hmm. single. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I just, uh, Maybe kind of stretching out what we think we could be, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's the eternal question with the musician or, or band, right? We're like, do you keep doing the thing that you're doing or do you try something out, mm-hmm. try some weird stuff? Um, and, you know, I think music, like people who, I don't know, music listeners now, in my opinion, I think are much more mm-hmm. widescreen, mm-hmm. you know? We'll listen to hardcore and then like just straight up pop, R and B, jazz, whatever. It doesn't matter. People listen to whatever they like, and I like the idea that a band could also be that, you know? Yeah. Um, instead of just oh, this is a pop punk band and they're only gonna do pop punk. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that influencing you, or you're just like, there's freedom because you put this out as a single and like whatever the future holds musically, you don't feel bound to be like every song has to sound like joy weather right like it, it can be like joy weather is what tickles your fancy this week right like mm-hmm. if you want to sound like american football you're gonna sound like american football if you want to right. write a taylor swift inspired song you're going to yeah i um i don't know i think that's when you get the to me like the most interesting music or um, I don't know. You can kind of tell when people are like inspired or they're into the mm-hmm. thing that they're doing. And so I would, I try to keep that in mind. Um, cause I don't know why, why limit yourself? I mean, I, I mean, I, I get why, but also I think we're a small enough band that we can do kind of whatever we want yeah. and, you know, not going to cause any problems for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Is your future goal here to just keep, releasing singles and go that route or are you looking at like full length and albums as important good question um i i think currently sort of short term um singles um but you know like i'm I'm an album boy i like albums Mm -hmm. and eps um but it also seems like that's not the uh the meta game or like you know kind of what uh is I don't know, most conducive to music promotion or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is fine, you know, because either way, you're putting out whatever eight to 10 songs a year. That's an album a year, it's just yeah. like coming out one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, because you're not like a heavy touring act, like you don't have to, you're not promoting something for six months. You can kind of be more picky and choosy with shows and when you go out, because like there's probably something new you can share on the mm-hmm. road and stuff people can draw from right right and also i mean you know shows are getting canceled left and right and we're kind of like <laughs> <laughs> um so sort of unintentionally have become like an internet band at least for the time being but mm-hmm. you know again like nothing set in stone you don't have to be any one way for longer than you want to be yeah were there things you guys were trying to do over the last two years like whether it was online shows or live streams or uh something to connect or just like you put out the cover ep Mm -hmm. yeah uh so for the first year uh we were all pretty pretty serious i guess i don't know like what the the right word is but we hadn't seen each other almost that whole year um because we're like yeah it you know, no one knows what's happening. And then it was in like 2021 ish that we like, yeah, okay, we just start seeing each other and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, honestly, not thinking too much about live, the live mm-hmm. aspect of it. Um, it's been more just the recording, even the, um, the cover EP started off as just like a, a hashtag content kind of project where yeah. we're like, 
let's just put up some videos on YouTube. At least we got something going on and then figured, ah, there's, these are recorded. Might as well, you know, put them on Spotify too. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So what's, what's the future look like? You're not playing shows, but I assume you're, you got a studio there. You're just working with Maggie. Uh, I assume you have new music on the way that we do uh we have a new single coming out next month on february 4th and the intention at least is to put out uh continue to put out songs every i don't know month and a half or so um because i am a i don't know i like to write Mm -hmm. i'm not one of those people that's like oh the inspiration needs to strike me or i can't do it i'm like it's tuesday at seven so it's time to write yeah um and yeah, I, I don't know. We're I'm I'm lucky enough to have a space where I can record and do all this stuff, and so that's yeah. the plan. That's cool. Are you influenced by anything particular at this moment, or is it just kind of whatever tickles your fancy? Is it going to sound more in that vein of uh, for the weekend, or is it just is it going to be all over the place, all <laughs> over the right? And you're not you're not releasing a hardcore song, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or am i no um i do really like comeback kid uh but They're that is not good. what's happening <laughs> um i think ed would quit the band if we did that so no <laughs> comeback kid. um i think it's gonna end up being whatever selfishly you know it's whatever i like right because yeah. i'm the one starting the songs and so i you know i can say that the next song is going to be a little bit more folk oriented okay um but I don't know. We have other ones that are, you know, sort of more power pop, kind of like our self-titled album. Um, yeah, it's just whatever tickles my fancy, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think even that is sort of there is a uh, a border to it. You know, mm-hmm. there's not going to be a trap song or like something like that. Um, and kind of going back to a couple things you said before, but I feel like regardless of what the the genre is or whatever the music is because it's the three of us working on it i think inevitably it will sound like joy mm-hmm. weather whatever that is yeah um and i think that's something we're always working to figure out like what it is and what it could be and where we want to take it and things like that right it's your voice and your writing style and mm-hmm. whether you write a song that's like mumford or something yeah that's whatever something else like it's gonna feel like you wrote it Mm-hmm. like it's it's always going to be some sappy introspective melancholic <laughs> bs and my my weenie voice you know as much as i want to sound like uh, the dude in hot water music i'm i just sound like me so just for a little while we could be on fire and i give all my life and time yeah i could be yours just for a little while Thanks for listening to As the Story Grows. Our intro music was written and composed by Jeremy Hunt. The As the Story Grows theme is by Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and give us a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can join us at patreon.com slash as the story grows. Be a part of our community and join the ongoing conversation over on Discord. If you enjoy this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening.